This is Nick Barrow with part three of Terry's Dartfish video analysis. Now let's have a look at the next shot. Is that me or Terry? That's me. Now this is using the 360 Pure Q trainer. Now what we'll see is from the side on view, I just want to see that the difference between this cue is that it's got a spring in the joint, which means if there's any unwanted forces in the cue, through 360 degrees the spring will break and you won't be able to play the shot properly, plain and simple. It's great fun to use and it's and it's not too sensitive either, so you can actually hold the cue with your normal tension but anything over and above that unnecessarily will cause the cue to break so let's see what happens here let's go half speed to observe things a bit more carefully side on view is the speed cue speeding up toward the end of the backswing here let's just check that Yes, it is. Yes, and you can see there's a downward force, obviously, on the hand there, uh, which is causing the cue to break in this direction somewhat. So this is half speed again. Let's see. I don't cue on the chest, so that makes it a bit easier to hold the cue intact without breaking the spring. But because the cue is changing direction very gradually, okay, just at the end when the cue maybe contacted my chin, but that was about it. I think this is using the 360 again. Let's see what happens with Terry on this yellow. Well, that's a bit sideways. I think the elbow went into the pocket before the yellow there. I think that's what was called playing with your shoulder. Actually, the cue remained intact if that is indeed the 360. Not sure it is, actually. This is another one. Yes, this is the 360 actually. Yeah, you can see that breaking toward the end there, can't you? So there's X more tension than needs to be, some unwanted forces in the queue toward the end of the delivery. Let's have a look here. The key point is at the end of the backswing, if there's any unwanted forces, is the queue bending at the end of the back? Yes, well, yes, there it is bending actually which shows there's unwanted forces in the hand toward the end of the backswing, which is quite common, especially if the backswing speeds up toward the end of the backswing. Uh, it's almost like gearing up to play the shot and tensing up to play the shot, and that's when those unwanted forces will come into the butt of the cue at that point, and then it will break this, the spring on the 360, but it's an invaluable feedback tool, the best I've ever seen. There you go, you see. So there's quite a lot of forces in the hand during the delivery and perhaps more than there needs to be. What you can keep in mind is what I found is after using this cue for a, for a while, probably four sessions, 20 minutes, an hour, half an hour each, something like that, I found when I made my delivery my hand was much lighter around the cue and whereas previously I would have uh, easily broken a hard ball there with the power in my hand at the end of the delivery on a shot of this power, now uh, probably I could hold um, a raw egg in my hand without breaking it, without breaking the shell at the end of a delivery uh, with uh, with this amount of power. So in other words you could replace the cue, the butt of the cue with an egg in my hand and it wouldn't uh, break. It's, so that's how loose I am on uh, uh, this cue has helped me to become and I feel I'm hitting the ball much more cleanly. This is 
is this 360 I believe it is let's see if this remains fixed or broken what I personally found is at the back here previously I used to have a lot of tension there and I used to pull the cue up into my chin and then my shoulders used to tense up to um, to compensate for the fact my chin was being pushed up and so everything is uh, much lighter now but I, I found I needed my using this cue forced me to devote a little bit more time to the disconnection of the backswing and the delivery in terms of I was able to or I was for my hand was forced to or it came up with a conclusion of slowing down toward the end a bit more gradually so that I was more in control of my muscles changing gear in a bit more time maybe 20 percent 30 percent longer stop at the backswing gear change at the backswing then gradually building up the cue speed very slowly very smoothly and that allowed me to go through that transition phase through the gear change phase which is quite complex I mean there are a lot of muscles stopping working on the backswing and to re-instruct the arm to start delivering the cue there's a lot of instructions there's a lot of muscles being activated there and for me to do it under control I needed that little bit extra time to allow my hand to do that in a state of relaxation with tension I could do it much more quickly than that but then that of course brings a lot of extra forces into the cue tension in my arm and a less smooth high, lower quality delivery Yeah, this is the 360 on this shot. I think the previous shot was my normal cue. So let's see what happens here. Well, not comfortable, so getting up from the shot. Good discipline to anyone who's watching there. If you can have the discipline to do that, if you're not comfortable, then uh, a feather in your cap, that is. So again, very loose at the back, not pulling up it up against the chin. Very gradual build up of speed from zero through to one mile an hour, two, three, four. Very slight bend just as the cue is going through into the chin there, I think. This is half speed on the slow motion, so this is probably about quarter speed to how I'd normally be moving the cue. And it's not pushing, it's it's grazing the chin, it's not pushing up against the chin, which is the huge difference that I noticed. I'd been doing that for years and being self-conscious about it. Now what you can see here, unique camera angle here, if we just reverse that and this is showing the speed of the slowing down of the backswing from a different angle which I think highlights what I'm talking about very clearly now if we go backwards here alright I'm going to go frame advance extremely slowly so there's Terry at the cue ball position with the grip just watch Terry's fingers opening up very nicely they open up very nicely toward the end of the backswing what they're doing is fine they're loose enough um, all right, this elbow is slightly out, but that's that's nothing really to worry about. I mean, that sort of range, 10 degrees or less, is going to give you a pretty accurate delivery. Anything else could be diminishing return and splitting hairs. But let's have a look at very slow advance, frame advance. See how this speeds up toward the end of the backswing look. See how quickly that's moving there. And then it's all happening all in one go. So it's great until the cue comes here. But then as soon as it comes further back. Oh. Now watch what's happening to the fingers. They're opening up nicely. And what's happening is the cue is moving forward before the fingers have a chance to start closing around the cue. Just 
just have a look here. So the fingers up very nice, open up very nicely toward the end of the backswing, which is coming right up. But before they have a chance to start gently closing around the queue, this, the queue's already on its way. It's all happening in a rush. And that in turn leads to tension in the upper body and the queuing arm, etc., etc. That's it, moving the hue nicely, well done. But still very quick start on the delivery. Now, So there, the, you can see the quality of movement is slightly different. That, if we go back to the beginning of the backswing here, and uh, <coughs> Okay, so watch carefully the speed of build-up of the backswing, slowly then moving to the normal backswing speed, then slowing it down to a stop, then changing gear, then very slowly starting the movement again. And that causes the upper half of the body to remain much more stable, you see. Let's have another look at this from this angle. Nice follow through position in the chest, that's great. Yeah, and the first finger opens up nicely. In other words, with tearing myself, this first finger here is slightly opening away from the second finger. Perhaps a little bit tight there. I think if I was actually using the 360, this is my cue, if I was using the 360 I'd probably be lighter there on my hand to be honest with you. Looking back I think I'm a bit lighter when I use the 360 than when I use my normal cue. Let's go half speed on this and see what happens. There you go. Yes, well, in fact, I was correct. Look how much extra that has actually broken there away from the second finger now that I'm using the 360 pure cue, which forces. And actually, you can see here that there's less tension in the fingers there than if we go back. Let's go back to when I was using my cue. See that following through and holding in the chest there. You see the cue is, unlike with Terry, which whose hand was pushing out to the right-hand side, on the delivery, if that's the line of aim there, let's see where the cue actually finishes in the chest. Yeah, so it remains on the line of aim. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow... The hand doesn't allow itself to get bullied by the chest outside the line of aim. But as you can see, there's a bit of white tension here on the fingers, and the first finger is closer to the second finger, which shows a, a little bit more tension than when I'm using the 360. So now using the 360, changing over. I'm just thinking there if whether if 
if I open this thumb up and have it pointing straight down like Rex Williams or Stephen Hendry, it may allow actually this first finger to move closer up the cue because wouldn't it appear to be more natural if you see this first finger is more or less 90 degrees to the cue isn't it but look at this finger it's actually it's about 60 degrees to the cue so it's almost the hands almost twisted around the cue isn't it but uh, if that thumb was not actually in contact with the cue at all or in contact with the fingers it's almost as if then I think those fingers might have and that's something I'm going to practice actually I'm going to write that down um, fingers 90 degrees to Q question mark so I'm going to put that in my Q case and practice that just have a think about that the next time I go to the club first time I've ever seen this angle of um, of uh, camera on my own game so that's quite interesting um, and then I, I suppose in that way if those fingers ended up feeling more comfortable at 90 degrees to the shaft of the cue to the line of aim then uh, the, th the thumb would be uh, guided by where the fingers are rather than now it seems as though the fingers are almost a little bit squashed by the thumb aren't they somewhat anyway I can only tell when I actually go there I might feel uncomfortable doing anything else but uh, and out of control doing anything else but it's uh, I'm going to try that and see what happens if anything, it will give me a bit of extra flexibility in my approach and a bit of extra cue control. Gradual build up of speed here. And then in the second half of the delivery, the speed, the power comes into the shot. First half of the delivery is gradually building up the speed only. This is slow motion, same thing. Again, lower light because it's a faster frame rate, frame rate per second. And at the end of the backswing, it should be slowing down more slowly. There you go. Watch how slowly that's coming to a halt. Very, very gradually. Very gradually. Otherwise, there's too much tension involved. And then a very gradual build-up of speed. Look at the f how. Look at the distance on each frame. Yeah. Now look at that. That's very interesting. I'm glad I did this in slow motion because that allied with this software's quarter speed delivery is uh, and I wonder if we've got one of Terry like this so right that that's that's the first frame okay right um, One, two, three frames, four frames, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten frames. In other words, that's probably maybe a tenth of a second. Ten frames to reach there. One, two, three, four. Five or one, two, three, four. Let's do that. So four frames to reach there. One, two. Two frames to reach there. Three, four. Two frames to reach there. One, two. Two frames to reach there. One, two. Two frames to reach there. And now I'm starting, I'm going to hit the cue ball in a second. One, two. Yeah, I think actually, because the acceleration has continued uh, and my hand is vir almost vertical there, so now I'm going to about to hit the cue ball. Let's see what happens to the delivery now. One, two. Uh, where's the joint? Just there, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so you can see the acceleration has reduced somewhat. One, two. One, two. Anyhow, so that's interesting, isn't it? How very 
gradually the start of the delivery happened and I, I without this here I have no control over the queue whatsoever it's just it just feels like a broomstick to be honest with you so let's have a look and see if we give Terry a slow motion action here <coughs> No, um, that's a pity. But what we will do is if we let's compare with normal speed, okay? So end of the delivery. Hang on, slow down a second. Okay, so let's go frame by frame here. Right, first frame here, that's where the, chalk, uh, the joint is rather. One frame. One frame. one frame. You can see actually now the cue is starting to come back into the center of the chin here on the delivery. So uh, the slower the start of the delivery happened the more aware you'd be if it was coming offline slightly or coming back into the correct line and you'd be able to feel that more easily and then you'd be able to correct it. Right now this is happening with no conscious awareness because it's happening so quickly. If the only reason you build up the, queue, the, speed the speed of the queue slowly is to feel what the heck is happening with the queue, it's worth it for that reason alone. Nothing to do with extra control or extra what the professionals do or you shouldn't snatch the ball. Just feeling what's happening with the queue when it's happening, it would be worth it on that basis. One more frame. It's coming here. One more frame. And we are in here. Right, so now if we fast forward. Do I play a shot next? Let's have a look. Right, so let's do that here. So there's the start of the queue. Let's do one frame. Actually, it's just there, isn't it? Okay, right, so one frame. Can you see that moving? That's here. One frame. That is here. One frame. That's here. One frame. That was two actually. Uh, one frame. One frame. That is probably 
there, one frame. Uh, is it there? Now that's very interesting, isn't it? I never, I never noticed that before. So what we're finding is that the the delivery starts much slower than Terry, but it actually builds up speed more toward the end. And it's easier to do that rather than almost slapping the ball, which is what Terry had done on the, on the first shot. Whereas this second one is more of a gradual build-up of speed, almost like the space shuttle taking off. When you see the uh, tower falling away from the shuttle, the engines fire, and it's hovering there, isn't it? And then it lifts up six, two inches and six inches and ten, twelve inches, and then it gradually, within fifty or a hundred meters, it starts really motoring, doesn't it? And that's interestingly what's happened here: very gradual start to the delivery and then the speed builds up incrementally. Interesting. So what we'll do is if we stop the video now and then we'll go on to a part four.